Well, hello and happy solstice, everybody. Araya here coming to you live, feeling so much better and brighter. Really, really grateful that we are here at this moment in time, at this place in our evolution and our ascension process. Man, the energies are exciting. Um, hello, Kat. We've got the everybody's starting to join in. I feel like we're going to have a big gathering <clears throat> today, which I'm excited about. You guys know. I'm um, hearing for the love of dragons that I do sometimes do live meditations, but haven't done one in a while. And when I got the inspiration for this one, uh, it was a week or two ago, it just felt so <sighs> coming up from the heart of, all right, this is a completion. This is what everybody needs. This is what we're going to do. And I'm so excited about it. And I, <laughs> in getting the space ready, I had to go ask the dragons who wanted to be present because I don't, um, with the Christmas garland and decorations, I don't have the um, canvases there. You can see gold and silver are there with me, just like last week. But I asked all the other dragons, and look, they all wanted to come. Uh, nobody wanted to be left out. <coughs> so this is sort of fun. And I will say I'm really grateful. My brain has not been working super well after being ill. And I just sort of let go of it all because we're in this place of surrender to our process. And um, I remembered the microphone today. So <laughs> sound is going to be of the utmost quality on the playback. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear it really well. My volume's turned up on the phone. I got the microphone in and we are ready to rock and roll. And I'm seeing a lot of new faces coming on. Very excited about that. I am going to just share a little bit about the energies of the solstice before we go into meditation. Um, that way I feel like we'll be getting the meditation right around 11.11. I know the solstice itself was, um, I think, exactly three hours ago because it was 11 a.m. or 10.59 a.m. Pacific or Eastern Standard, excuse me. So we're still in those energies. Anytime today you're going to feel it and you've probably been feeling the build up to it. So I uh, want to talk about the solstice energies and make sure you're aware of some pieces um, that have been happening in multiple solstices that are all tied together so that you're aware. So going back, I mentioned this either on last week or the week before his live, um, <coughs> going back to 2012, everybody was expecting that solstice to be the big turnaround, the big turning point. And there feels like, wow, we're nine years later. Um, a lot has shifted, but you know, when is this actually going to swing through? When are we moving forward? And we are moving forward constantly and continually. But what I see looking back is 2012 was still a very powerful alignment and it actually was the turning point for the collective timelines. So there's a big collective piece associated with the 2012 um, solstice and the movement from lots of potential timelines to a narrowing down and a focus in towards we're moving to one timeline. There is one ultimate timeline that all of these completion points are turning into and they, they're converging. So that was a really big piece from 2012. Here we are nine years later completing that spiral. So there are nine year cycles and I've, I've started to see some other people also mention this because they're picking it up. And I felt it a month or two ago of, whoa, we're building towards this and this is a completion point. This is that timeline piece and the collective piece coming together to finalize, to crystallize into a completion point. Nine year cycle spiraled up. We're at a new doorway, a new opportunity point. And then last year, if you guys were with me, I believe we did a, a live meditation. I'm trying to remember, but it was 2020 and it was a really big piece. And it was, yes, we did the meditation live with um, Uluru and <clears throat> it might've been on a separate Zoom, might not have been in the group, but that was when many of us, like there were, I want to say over a hundred people just aligned with me and then others that were, there were millions lining into Uluru and I was supposed to be there live in person with a group and then it all changed and we were able to do more by being all over the world in our group aligning together. So that 2020 solstice was really what I look back energetically about Gaia and a shift for Gaia, for the planet, for, um, hello to Egypt. Good to see you, Shireen. Um, it, it was a, it was a piece for Gaia's completion. It was a massive pull together. The ceremony in Uluru, my whole body's getting shivers. Um, the ceremony in Uluru 
with the aboriginals and the magic box underneath um, the rock, underneath Ayers Rock, activated something for Gaia. That in turn activates something for us, but for me it was the turning point for Gaia's uh, ascension journey really kicking off. And so we're also com coming to a completion point of that year-long spiral, of that um, peace with Gaia. And now what I really see unfolding for this one is very interesting because it's the personal piece. So you guys are going to feel this solstice more directly personally in your journey of a turning point, a doorway, moving through. Hello, DJ. Good to see. Oh, there's so many faces that I haven't seen in a while. This is exciting. Um, and I, I'm going to talk for another couple of minutes because I know there's more people con connecting in. So I'm just going to give them that time. Um, so the personal piece is this year. This is about moving into <coughs> our actual what the guides have been calling for me a tumbler. So you're going to start feeling expansion and yet stillness. You're going to start feeling paradox in your body because there's 3D and there's 5D and you're experiencing and fluctuating between both. But the zero point doorway, it's all our own individual journey. I know that a big piece of mine was this illness that as I looked in hindsight at it, you guys know I was very, very ill. I canceled two weeks of lives. I never do that. Um, I was knocked down to my knees. I was knocked down to literally a zero point physically. And when I look back on it, the magical part of it was the fever. I wasn't aware of the full moon like timings. I look back and the day that my fever started was the full moon in November. The day that I felt a shift last Saturday in my lungs and the ability to open them and it feels like they open both internally and externally in a different way. I felt a shift on Saturday, which has moved me forward again uh, rapidly in my own physical healing and, and recovery. And that was the full moon of December. So for me, my, part of my doorway was this feminine energy process from full moon to full moon when I needed to be knocked to my knees because I was going through a deep heart healing and a deep release. Each of us will have our own doorway. There have been people that have had to have uh, open heart surgery. There have been other people that have been ill or had something different um, with their lungs. I am seeing most people having something going on in the heart chakra region as we shift to a spherical heart chakra going on through here can be the lungs, can be old grief, can be old traumas, can be something deep in the heart space, uh, realigning and just allow the process as scary as it might be. You may not need to be knocked to your knees like I was, but that was something I needed to surrender and slow down and drop more into my heart, into the now, into what is right in front of me of what I'm inspired to do in this moment, which is why it's so exciting for me to be here because this is everywhere, every ounce of what I want to be doing in this moment. And it's going to make it that much more powerful. Like that to me is like, wow, yes, this is what we're here for, to be on fire with what we want to do in that moment. And when you do that, you're going to touch so many people and my body's woo, full body goosies. So this year's completion, what I've seen in the last couple of sessions with people this week around the solstice energy is we're entering the tumbler. What does a tumbler do? You take stones and you put them into the tumbler and the stones are, are rough and they've got dirt or uh, coating on them. They've got that veil on them, right? And they tumble and they tumble and they tumble and they get tossed together. They're in chaos. They're being thrown around. And what happens? They get polished, they get refined, their corners get smoothed, their edges get smoothed down. We are entering our own tumblers. It's part of the ascension process. It's part of moving into our full light body and our full perception of all of the 5D realm. We are not going to a new place. We are opening our perception to really be able to see the spherical nature of dimension and the overlay of how 3D is overlaid by 5D We've forgotten what that experience is like. And as we move more into it, <clears throat> we don't need to drop down anymore, but we can. And as you go through and allow the tumbler process, you will have moments, I guarantee, through, from these solstice energies that <clears throat> you're going to feel your buttons being pushed. You're going to feel, I feel a lot of pressure and energy through my heart chakra. Why is it focused on the heart chakra? We're moving into that spherical nature and needing to access the seed point. What is the seed point? The seed point is that point of light that was the beginning, the fractal energy from your soul, from your oversoul light body, dragon self, for those of you that are dragon, 
that when it fractaled off to become this human body, this experience, me as a Rhea, you as who you be, each of you, there's Wilma, I'll pick on Wilma because I see her name right there. Each of you became that individual. You had to have a seed point of light from your oversoul to do that. That seed point comes in and establishes at the heart. That's when that pulse starts in that little tiny grain of rice that is your body coming into being. That seed point is your connection to yourself. That is in the center of the heart space. Yay, Shawnee, you found it. In the center of the heart space, in the center of the heart chakra, that then expands up in a amygdala, down in the power center, and becomes this experience in 3D. Now that we're merging those energies back into the heart space, the seed point becomes the core, it becomes the important piece of coming home. Because the seed point is that zero point doorway. I talk a lot about the zero point doorway, especially in my programs and classes. If you wanna know more or you wanna actually feel, if you feel a heart pulse call to be accelerated and launched starting January 25th, join the quantum flight. I've got about five spaces left and this is going to be a program that whew, literally launches you forward over eight weeks of an entire uh, year of foundation with the dragons with all the new information for our ascension process and it's going to launch you. That if you're feeling that heart pulse, get a hold of me to get one of those spots. But this movement forward, that zero point doorway, going back into that, that's what I'm talking about right now. That center point of your heart, that seed point, is your interface between 3D and 5D, between the merge of your masculine and feminine, inner, outer, the spaces in between your, your physical, biological body here. It's that doorway, the interface between the two sides of the coin and where both ex exist simultaneously. And it's that doorway that we go through and pull ourselves into being what feels like being inverted, upside down, that's the kind of tumbler, and as you come out, you realize that you're actually now right side up and everything that was in 3D was the actual inversion. That everything we've been living as normal, as comfortable, that's been the inversion of our reality. And as we go through and get catapulted through that doorway and things start to right themselves, you're gonna recognize and remember and have a knowing of what's true and right for you. That's our ascension journey of coming into that knowing, coming into that full merge with self on a soul level and you may feel in the tumbler all the other pieces of yourself that have been incarnational aspects in this earth plane coming back in. You might remember pieces from other countries or other timelines. You might remember pieces beyond that. The further we go, the further back we can remember. So allowing that, allowing that to open and knowing the perfection of this solstice being about your personal doorway. We've had the one nine years ago for the collective. It's completing now. And what happens when the collective and the personal completes? They come together at that meeting point. The circle completes itself and they meet. And what is the collective and the personal? They are those opposite paradox sides of the doorway that actually interface. And we are part of the collective. And as we move through our doorway and we move into the collective harmonic, the communal harmonic that is the quantum realm, that new earth, that 5D, as we move into that, we are gonna realize the importance of the collective piece because we are now interfacing into the communal harmonic, which is about the collective, but in harmony. Because we are in harmonic with ourselves, and we allow everyone else to be in harmonic with themselves. That's that unconditionality. And that's what allows a communal harmonic to work. That's the beauty of the bigger realm. So the collective piece coming full circle now to our personal piece within it, we go through our doorway. What happens when we each go through our doorway? That allows the collective to pull itself, every single one of those individuals through the doorway, which allows the new earth to be populated and have this communal, no longer service to self, but service to everything because we're part of it. So let's dive into these energies. Um, we've got a great crowd on. I'm excited to see everybody and all these faces and names that I've seen around and even some new ones, very exciting. So to go on meditation, um, I feel like the microphone here has got me good. I'm just going to stay here rather than get real close to the mic. And hopefully keep my throat from choking with a little water there. And let's dive in. So get yourself comfortable. You can be seated. You can be laying down just in a position where you won't fall asleep. And just start taking some deep breaths. 
focusing into the chest. Whatever your normal meditation focus is, some are on the nose tip, some are on a mantra. When you go in, I want you to follow my voice. I want you to let the dragons guide you through me and my own Tana, my dragon self is stepping forward and pulling through. You might start to see it in my eyes here before I close my eyes <clears throat> and allow, <sighs> allow that seed point in your chest to become your focus. Hearing from some other place, this voice that's guiding and directing and allowing to stay on point, to stay focused within you, within your heart, deep in the center of your heart chakra to that seed point that is your light from your oversoul self, from your dragon, if you be dragon, from your fairy, if you be fairy, from your star being, if you be star, whatever your core soul form or essence is, most of you dragon in this group, but there'll be many that watch the replay or that you share it with. And the dragons want to touch all of them because they have been the ones holding this grid. Their job is done. They've begun passing off to the Lyrans who are taking over into the quantum realm, which frees the dragons up to do many beautiful things that they've been sharing with me. And many of them able to come now into our lives en masse as more and more are ready to awaken to be those guides and guardians because they've been able to be relieved of their post, holding the matrices, holding the grids of this universe. As you go into that seed point, allow yourself to feel it open and expand as if there's a brilliant golden sun opening up through the chest. We call forth all of the energies of this solstice alignment to come directly in and through each of us individually into that seed point. To move us into our personal zero point doorway, our tumbler process that's going to move us forward rapidly. And that each of the dragons that are breathing into this sphere, and I can feel a host of dragons beginning to circle around us, creating a sacred sphere. Everyone that's either on the live here or catching the replay, that they're all part of this group sphere. And there are dragons en masse all the way around the sphere, and they're beginning to breathe flame. Beautiful, all of the, all different flames. There's flame dragons with multiple different colors. There's actual flame, there's ice flame. You will feel the flame coming in and you may start to feel your body getting hot as this generates energy into this seed point to expand and open it. <sighs> Allowing debris to be burned up, debris that's ready to be released from your field through physical, mental, emotional, energetic, fifth dimensional, sixth dimensional, all of the bodies. <sighs> Any debris, we allow it to be burned and released. Anything that's holding us back, allow your intention to be put all of your resistances, even if you're unaware of them as of yet to bring all of your resistances up into the sphere so that they may be burned away, allowing you a clear passage forward into your expansion, into the energies that are going to pull and catapult you forward to that merge with your light body, to that merge and knowing within self, deep trust within self and a shift in perception. feel the dragons actually beginning to chant as the flames are fully engulfed within the sphere. And maybe you can hear the chanting. It's interesting to hear the dragons chant. It's different than maybe an angelic choir. It's a bit lower in octave and more <clears throat> undefinable as melody but they're in harmonic that is flowing together and it's creating waves of sound now around the flames. And those sound waves 
are going to move through the geometry of your field. So allow your heart, your innermost heart song that is your soul signature that's within that seed point, that tiny little seemingly tiny seed point that is both the doorway to expand into yourself and move through into the higher dimensional spaces <clears throat> and have your knowing and yourself come through. But allow that geometry to expand until it's all the way around your body field, until you feel it encompassing your auric body. You may even get a sense of what shape or shapes dominate this geometry that is part of your soul signature. But by allowing your geometry to expand from the seed point all the way around you, it's creating an inner um, perimeter and an outer perimeter because it exists in both places simultaneously. And as that outer perimeter forms, that's where it's interfacing with everyone else in the group sphere. And the harmonic of sound coming from the dragons and all realms are represented, all lineages are represented. So when those sound waves begin working around your geometry, you're going to feel as if your geometry is being <clears throat> not compressed, but as if there's waves moving through it at the edges of it and moving deeper and deeper into it, where you begin to realize the geometry, because it's encompassing you and yet it's also in that seed point within you it's as if it exists through every layer of your being from that seed point all the way out beyond your auric body and you're going to feel that sound wave movement begin to generate very gently waves all the way through the geometry and working their way down into towards the seed point. And as it begins to work into the perimeter of your geometry, you may actually be able to sense or delineate the specific sound waves that are part of what's hitting your field and able to interface and interact with it because every one of you will receive based on the sound wave patterns a different wave pattern moving through you that aligns to your lineage and as you begin to recognize some of the dragons within your lineage that are coming to bring this sound wave to move through you it's an opening that they're offering they are offering these sound waves because code travels in sound and light and color and you'll receive it you may start to perceive color along with the sound you may start to hear light language or code or feel it just hitting your inner eardrums they are bringing in patterns to begin breaking open your geometric patterning that's been closed in shut down not spinning or operational to allow more of your essence to begin to come through. So just sit with and feel the power of the wave movement, much like being in the ocean with waves pulsing back and forth. And it will start at the perimeter and slowly work its way into that seed point. And just allow, however it wants to move through you, you may need to physically move your body along with the wave pattern. You may have sounds begin and gen generate out of you that harmonize with it. Let whatever needs to happen that's being instigated and impulsed up through your heart as an intuitive knowing, an intuitive guidance, allow yourself to trust it and follow it be it to roar, be it to scream, be it to sing, be it to chant, be it to just be at peace and feel the colors or sense the dragons. And you may begin to have dragons because they're starting to move now once they've generated the harmonic. It's well within the sphere. There are certain dragons that are beginning to enter the sphere. 
to interact with you directly. So you may have a dragon come and meet you face to face, eye to eye. You may feel one working along your spine or up around the headspace. Just allow them to open and show you maybe where your resistance has been or what's been holding you back, where your wall is and what they can open to take you to your next level. Some of you may feel a dragon at your shoulder breathing heavily. You may feel your own growl resonating from deep within, trying to move up the channel to actually be verbally expressed. <coughs> And begin to feel like the sphere is getting very crowded or compressed feeling. There are many, many dragons pulling themselves into the sphere, intentionally not expanding the sphere to be bigger. This crowded sensation, this <clears throat> tightening in, is a focus into your channel, into your column of energy within a collective field, a communal field, because they want you to feel the juxtaposition of crowded, like being in a metro station or somewhere, an event where there's so many people bustled in, you're just jostled and pushed around and how does your body respond to that? Does it get irritated? Does it get agitated? This is the 3D piece of being crowded. And yet at the same time, when you open and feel simultaneously the harmonic that they hold as they stand next to you and how your energy body opens, it doesn't necessarily feel crowded, but it feels the touch of the beautiful divine being next to it and oak can open and breathe as if there's all of a sudden this space in between because the spaces in between have opened and you find a bridge to the beauty of that communal quote crowding and how they can all be within this space and yet because the spaces in between just opened on some level you can still perceive the jostling crowding of a 3D experience that they're pushing in and yet on the internal field you feel this expansion even though they're all around you there's something expanding in the other direction inverting itself through some internal space that maybe you weren't even aware of these are the spaces in between this is the place of your expansion and when you're there you can still feel the presence of all the beings, and yet now you have infinite space around you. The paradox. Universal truth is that paradox. Find your rhythm within it, where you can perceive both simultaneously, standing in that zero-point doorway of your seed point of your heart. Allowing that to be the norm, allowing that to be the comfort zone. And for some of you, you may have already met that place. And you can go beyond it and feel the expansion into more and more of your own energies. Being able to perceive more and more of your own signature. Or feel your own dragon. 
and breathe with it. feel as though there's actual hands, most likely dragon hands, on your shoulders or your hips or your wing plates, different points in your body, your neck, your elbows, your temples, your ankles or your feet. For some I'm seeing that there's been shackles in some of these places and they're just unbinding them. Others, they're anchoring some of the crystalline points where the light body anchors in. Each of you is receiving something different from where you're at and what you are ready for. But if you sense or feel actual pressure or as if something or someone is touching your body, tune into that dragon. Who are they and what are they gifting you with? Feel that stabilize and come in. Maybe there's a sharing happening with that dragon and you're receiving information. Allow it all to come in. Or allow yourself the space to come back to it. As another level of awareness creeps into the center point of the sphere. And wherever you sit within the group sphere, you can detect the center point because the crystal dragon is coming up through it. Like our own seed point within the group sphere, the crystal dragon is expanding through the center of it. Much like in Gaia's core, and I do feel that there's a mirroring happening between this group sphere and the larger macro that is the planet, Gaia herself and all the collective, and the crystalline core. And the crystalline dragon is just coming up to allow an expansion through the crystalline field through your bodies to what level you are ready to receive many of you are connected to the crystalline pyramids within Atlantis or the timeline of Atlantis allow these crystalline codes that are coming from the crystal dragon in the center of the sphere to activate that within you connected to the Atlantean timeline and the crystal pyramids to come full circle spiral back to that and have a merge point into those timelines for another level of completion within your own merging process allowing memory to come in of how you interact with those crystal pyramids if you are in Atlantis. And feeling the recognition of the resonance of those crystalline harmonics coming off the pyramids and the crystalline harmonics coming off of the crystal dragon in the center of our sphere. Something is so familiar as it moves through your body fields. And you allow yourself to embrace it deep into your own heart, into your own crystalline core. This gift from the crystal dragon, let it speak to you and show you individually what the crystal dragon is bringing to you as an individual gift for your personal process with this solstice energy. And allow your 
your whole field to be lit up with that pure crystalline energy. There's a rhythm of breath that the crystal dragon is bringing in to allow yourself to align to it. You may feel as if a crystal dragon has overlaid their own heart pulse within yours, bringing your alignment of your heartbeat, your pulse, your breath through all of your bodies into its next state of alignment closer to your own signature. Just feel that shift take place deep within the heart on all levels. This will allow you to resonate more directly with the crystalline field. You may feel a deeper connection with crystals physically around you in your space, or even feel one calling you to work directly with that frequency signature that is the crystal. And that the crystal dragon will use those physical crystals around your space to continue working with you to keep aligning your pulse and rhythm closer and closer to your own signature, your own heart song. And just allowing yourself to maintain that field of presence and that energetic in your core as you open to the space around you staying deeply, deeply connected within the sphere and the dragons, and yet with full awareness of the space around you, the chair you're sitting on, the floor you're laying on, the cushions behind your back. As you open your eyes and allow yourself to have both simultaneously present, not losing the connection with this crystal in the field, and allowing yourself to open more and more deeply, to all of it, to maintain this as you continue through your meditation, if you want to stay in meditation, or the rest of the day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And allowing this to become more and more present within your field. As you know how to breathe it in now, and you can return to this group sphere, you can return to this energetic dynamic in any moment that you desire to keep connecting to it. Because the more you do, the more you're going to hold that space and continue expanding, continue remembering, continue having that deeper knowing. This is our ascension journey, the merging to self. So knowing some of you will stay in a meditative state, just go forward with that. I will allow myself <coughs> to move into and hold this space for the remainder of the day as I maintain the group sphere. Even though I click off, wishing you a beautiful holiday, beautiful solstice, and so grateful that you were able to join me and the dragons to have this expansion and this movement forward through your doorway. That hopefully you will see and feel the movement forward as things begin to shift and change in your life, in your journey. And beautiful to see you, Lori. So <laughs> lovely. You are very welcome and breathing it in, allowing any of you that know and feel a heart pulse calling to reach out if you know that you need to launch bigger, launch further. We're doing that together as a group starting January 25th, about a month from now. So a month of integration with this and moving forward, it's gonna be powerful. And it's an amazing group that both was here today, but that is also coming together for that. 
So thank you for joining me today. Whether you're going to catch it on the replay or on the YouTube channel later, I know there's people that are going to be coming in for that. I can feel the size of the sphere um, versus how many are actually on the live call. I'm grateful to all of you that made it on the live call. I hope you benefited from this and hold this space around you. I will be holding it around you with the dragons for at least the next 24 hours. Woo, full body tingles on that. So just enjoy the expansion, enjoy the revelations, and enjoy the tumbler because the tumbler is going to be the greatest gifts to polish, refine, and move you into that space closer to who you be, that merge place. You are so welcome, everybody. I'm getting beautiful messages of gratitude. Blessings to everybody, and I will see you next Tuesday. Have a beautiful holiday, everybody. Bye for now.